What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I am in Sedalia on this very chilly January day. I'm not sure if you guys can see all the snow behind me, but I thought I would do a video about designing a mushroom farm. Um, so I've got my land survey out and uh, some of the blueprints for the Quonset building that we're going to be building in the spring. Um, we officially have our permits for all of that underway, so it's just a matter of waiting for the weather to warm up and um, pouring the slab. That's going to be our next uh, next adventure, is getting the concrete poured. So I guess one of the biggest questions that I get asked about designing a mushroom farm is the ratio between fruiting rooms, um, the lab space, and the rest of the space, um, how you should allocate the different space that you have available. So my rule of thumb is 40% fruiting, 10% lab, 50% incubation, processing, and storage. So that's just kind of, you know, a general rule of thumb. And I'll kind of explain my philosophy behind all of that. So right now we're planning on building a 1,500 square foot Quonset um, on a concrete slab. So the reason that we decided to go with um, that building design is because of, number one, the price, and number two, it seems very easy to construct and modify accordingly. So our plan was to have um, two garage doors on either end and then two side doors. And that way we'll have access from all sides of our building so that we can implement the cleanliness um, from starting from the lab all the way through to the back side of the building where the mushroom blocks will get discarded. So there's a lot of um, people that are growing mushrooms in storage containers. And one of the biggest problems with that is the headspace. So the Quonset has a rounder headspace and that allows for the HVAC insulation and just a better fresh air exchange system than a small cube or the, the grow boxes that are out there. Um, so, all right, so I talked about the ratio. So 40% fruiting. So if you take a 1,500 square foot building and round it, that's about 650 square feet to work with for fruiting. So I plan on doing three 200 square foot fruiting rooms because I want to be able to pull my mushrooms out clean the whole room while I'm still having mushrooms growing. So it's important to have multiple grow rooms and compared to one giant grow room for cleanliness reasons. Um, also, you can uh, dial in different environments so you can possibly grow different species of mushrooms as well. So I'll, uh, I'll get into that as we start to build out our building. But that leaves me with about... 950 square feet to work with so I say 10% lab even though I'll probably have more about 20% lab space because I do a lot of lab work myself but you can get away with a really small room 10 by 15 square feet if you have a flow hood and a good air conditioner for when your bags are moving in to your lab to cool off from the sterilizer and then that would leave 50% of the building or, you know, if you're working in a basement, half your basement for incubation, um, processing, which includes sterilization, um, bagging, just storage for supplies, and then some picking tables for when you're harvesting your mushrooms, and um, walk-in cooler for post-harvest storage. So that should take up about half your building. So my plan is to have... Um, my lab kind of off in its own bubble so that it's not being contaminated with um, 
the sterilization process. And then as the bags are sterilized, I can move them into the lab to cool off. And then that way they won't um, get contaminated during that process. And then after I would inoculate them in the lab, they're going to go into incubation. So incubation is really the biggest question mark in um, a mushroom facility. It really depends on whether or not you're going to be growing shiitake mushrooms. So I have, you know, a love-hate relationship with shiitakes. They take a very long time to colonize. So if you're going to grow shiitakes, account for that extra space because they're going to take probably twice or three times as long as all the rest of the mushrooms. But they do produce a lot of mushrooms, and they're one of my favorite mushrooms. So I'm trying to figure out the best balance between incubation space and then um, supplying shiitakes. So I'm still working that out. Um, right now, I just do a few batches every month or so just to you know have a small amount they're not regularly available like lion's mane or oyster mushrooms which are pretty good yielders and uh, more are, are faster at growing so other factors to consider while you're designing your grow space hvac so that is going to include fresh air exchange cooling heating um, also electric and plumbing, which we're going to have that installed um, separately from our house. So that's very exciting. Um, currently, we're using our home heating system in Denver, and that works really well, but it gets pretty costly, especially as you scale up your mushroom farm. So my hopes and dreams are to um, go solar and do a completely off-grid, self-sustaining mushroom farm. Um, that's a little bit a ways off just because of our budget, but that's my long-term vision. Um, so then that leads us to the efficiency. So insulation, um, different air exchanges like we talked about, heat capturing exchanges. I saw this really cool video about geothermal cooling on Myers mushrooms. Um, and there's a lot of different technology out there that will help reduce those electrical costs and eventually lead to the point where we can, you know, run our farm completely off solar. We have a lot of sun on the south facing slope, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to utilize that to power our mushroom farm. And then I guess the last um, important aspect of a mushroom farm design is going to be the cleaning and um, I guess just discarding or composting of the mushroom substrate. So we're going to design our own um, compost system. Right now I use the, there's a 50 gallon tumblers that I compost our mushroom blocks in and that works really well, especially when you're adding kitchen scraps to. So I want to scale that up. And then I can use my substrates from the mushrooms to um, inoculate the rest of my property and just enhance the soil health of all the, the area on my property. And starting first probably with a vegetable garden and then expanding into either an apple orchard or a peach orchard, something that can withstand the brutal... Um, winters here in Sedalia. All right, guys. So that's kind of just a general overview of things that you should consider when you're designing your mushroom farm. So um, the fruiting space, the lab space, and then the incubation space. My ratio right now is 40, 10, 50. And that could change over the next couple months. I'm um, probably only going to build out... Um, the fruiting rooms first and then see how I like it if there's enough space or not and then adjust accordingly but right now we have our class signups on mushroomcall.net backslash events 
So if you're interested, this upcoming Saturday, January 15th, we have an online class. Um, it's filling up pretty quickly, but you can follow the link below. And then we also have our in-person classes at the end of the month all the way through April. Um, those are filling up quickly too. So if you haven't signed up yet, definitely um, save your spot. And I look forward to meeting you guys. These classes have been so fun and I've met so many cool people. So I appreciate everyone coming from out of state. We even had some people come from out of the country. So it's really awesome to see the mushroom community grow. And I hope to see you at our next class. Um, and then once this snow melts, we'll be pouring our slab. And I can do another recap video as we build out our mushroom farm. All right, guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos or mushroom farming videos like these. Stay tuned. We're going to have some more um, updates to our breeding project. So right now, if you haven't checked out our video on immaculate inoculation and all the subsequent videos, we're walking through some different breeding techniques and different um, selection techniques for choosing the best phenotypes. So check out those videos and until next time, much love.